Jeff Knight, are you in Cabo or something? Holy cow, what a great background you have. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, you, you should know that area. <laughs> Blondo's got the wildlife in the background. <laughs> it's yeah. 1030. I'm going to get started and say happy Monday to everybody. I love Mondays. Mondays are my favorite day of the week. Um, I'm Brian Conroy here with Grant Smithwick. We're going to try to record this one today and see how it goes. This is my first slide. I just thought I'd do a little bit of a start off thing to something a little fun for all of us. Um, Basically, a couple housekeeping things just to welcome everybody again to another Monday mornings with Masterwall. Um, there is a chat screen. I'll try to be monitoring that. You got to realize that me and Grant are the ones that are doing all this by ourselves. No extras, no other people around here on cameras or anything like that. Um, you can raise your hand underneath if you open up participants view. Um, you can grab participants and then you can raise your hand um, down there. We'll see your hand raised. And, and if you have a question rather than just jumping in, ask those questions any point during this show. Um, this way we'll be able to kind of address those things on the slide that's there. If you want to save those questions to later, that's fine as well. We can go back and hopefully discuss those type of things later as well. Um, I'd encourage you guys to leave your videos on. I think that's one of the things that I wanted to make sure when we're doing this, that we are doing something a little bit unique and special to be able to see each other, right? 70% of all communication a lot of times is by way of seeing each other. Um, it's not just verbal. So this is a little bit different than a normal podcast where you're just listening to information, but we'd be able to see each other as well, especially at the end of the presentation when we're done with the slides and we're just talking back and forth, um, we'll be able to kind of see everybody on a screen type of thing. Um, also, going forward with other reps that we're going to have on, we've kind of confirmed already, a few of them are joining us today, um, but confirmed people like Plastic Components, we're looking at Dow Chemicals, um, we're looking at uh, Georgia Pacific, people that are coming on, again, within the industry of what we're doing in Stucco and Eves and the exterior envelope specifically, that would come and also not only educate us, but discuss with us. Um, also, industry performance things like BIM, uh, BIM model things, Construct Connect. We're looking at having um, one of their guys. I think he's on today. Uh, Mark Fly is also going to be with us today. He's looking at doing something there. So there's a lot of different versatility things that we're talking about. Um, so with that, we'll get going today specifically with master wall finishes. Um, that's kind of what we're going to be keying on. This is kind of what we're looking at. I'm going to give the control over this morning, if I can, to Grant. Grant, are you able to go ahead and click on there at all yet? Yep. Let me know if you get that. Yep. Uh, there it is. There you go. Take all right, it away, I'll take it. So good morning. So look, if you can see my video, I'm really embracing this thing. I mean, I've got this whole boom mic. <laughs> I mean, I'm really getting into this. So we're sitting at the office, got plenty of time on our hands. So hope everybody can hear me okay. Good morning. If you're like me, if you're in the Southeast, the storms came through last night, you know, had kids coming down to the bedroom at like 1.30, 2 o'clock. Of course, their stomach hurts, you know, something's up. So I maybe look a little foggy in the eyes this morning. So just giving you a heads up, but I'm going to do the best I can. So uh, this presentation is going to cover uh, synthetic finishes, which can be installed over eaves and also over stucco systems. So obviously when we're discussing EFs, uh, we're talking about proprietary products to master wall. Um, and then with stucco, you can get more general. Um, obviously that includes master wall, sim plaster, fiber stucco, but also with Dale and the Quickcrete guys here, that would be Quickcrete, other fiber reinforced stuccos as well as field mix products as well. So I'm gonna kick this off. You can see there's some nice photos here. These are all master wall finishes, some EFs, some stucco. 
uh, just give you a general idea of the options. Oh, let me go back one. All right, so first, let's do a quick review of what we did last week. So we went over the, uh, the uh, components of an EVES assembly. So you had the air and moisture barrier, continuous insulation, base coat mesh, uh, the mesh embedded in the base coat, and then of course the finish options. We look at a stucco assembly. You see a similar air and moisture barrier here in the orange, a paper barrier, a metal reinforcement or a plastic reinforcement of some kind, scratch and brown, and the similar finish, textured finish there as well. Uh, so once the finish is installed, unless you have a real keen eye or you go knock on a wall, like many of us do in this business, right? You see a nice, nice finished wall, you go knock on it to see if it sounds like foam or does it sound like a solid cement surface? So what we're gonna go over are the finish options over these assemblies. And obviously there's other assemblies as well, which can be used for these. So a uh, cement board um, is an option, but we're gonna stick to stucco and eaves just for the sake of the majority of the projects. So finish types. So here's a nice project here, uh, multifamily. Um, on the right side, you can see that. So finish type number one. Uh, so these are master wall finish types, okay? Superior acrylic DPR, so we call our superior finishes, and that would include um, your, your traditional stucco type finishes, um, but our standard finish is a DPR finish. You also have elastomeric options, which is a hybrid uh, elastomeric acrylic product. It's more flexible, has greater elongation than a standard acrylic. But also remember, it's a softer finish. Uh, so the softer finish allows for greater flexibility, but always consider that. And we typically do not see elastomeric finishes used over EFs. Uh, you have a silicone upgrade, which would be an upgrade which is done in the factory. This is not something you add in the field uh, because you want to siliconize your finish. This is uh, a silicone uh, additive that's added in the factory. It offers a greater uh, capacity for a clean surface. We have a mildew enhancer, which is similar to the silicone additive in that it's um, added in the manufacturing facility and just offers greater resistance to mildew, mildew growth on the surface. So obviously with textured finishes, there's small pits and crevices which mildew can grow in. Uh, then you also have the hydrophobic, which is enhanced um, above a silicone, which is a self-cleaning self uh, product, which basically hydrophobic would mean it, um, not scared of water, but uh, with water, it cleans the surface. And then we have a stucco gray DPR, DPR meaning dirt pickup resistance. And those that grade of finishes, uh, there's four textures and it's only for use over stucco. So it's not an Eves finish. All right, so in those standard DPRs, superior finishes, uh, these are the standard uh, texture finish options. So there's a swirl course, the top right um, would be that um, finish. You can see it's a very heavy swirl very popular about 20 years ago, not as common anymore. Then you have the perfect swirl, which is a close to a 2.0 aggregate. That's the bottom left. You can see it's a tighter swirl. Then we have the medium sand, which is a 1.5 aggregate, bottom right. Most common now. I think most people would say that's the most popular finish in their area. Center, you have a fine sand 1.0, also very popular now. And then top center is a Versatex, which is a, uh, I guess I'll say Freeform, which is another company's name for that product, but that's what a lot of people know it for. So you can get multiple looks from smooth to skip, uh, multiple looks with that finish. All right, anybody, uh, if you have any questions, make sure you're typing them in the chat down there. I saw that Jeff asked about 
DPR. So that stands for dirt pickup resistance, just so everyone knows. Um, I don't know if there's any more questions about that, but that stands for dirt pickup resistance. All right, so just a few uh, highlights of those standard finish textures. Virtually endless color options, uh, easy installation in that it doesn't require a high level of training. Uh, usually a basic training can, can get you um, to a professional level of, of finish quality. Um, these are the most common, most popular. Uh, they're available in all markets. And uh, again, texture preferences vary by region. So Dennis asked what's the most popular. That swung from being a swirl finish, um, which was on a lot of the residential projects, to now the medium sand and the fine sand are by far the most popular. And uh, I see people answering that question down there in the chat bar. So uh, maybe by region, you guys can give some feedback of what you see as the most popular. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing, right? And when it comes to regions, I mean, it's even in, in my Northeast Territory specifically, I, I kind of can say you've got, like Alan said there, from the Metro New York area, the 1.0, and yet, you know, Pennsylvania had seen a huge thing on the swirl area where it's it, it, even so close in proximity and yet so diverse in what they look for it and finish. Yep. All right. Uh, so this project is the Gaylord Rockies out in Aurora, Colorado. Uh, Dale, that's a quick creek project, I believe, with Master Wall Superior Finish installed over that. So a nice partnership here to uh, give a warranted project with the quick creek stucco system and Master Wall Superior Finish. Dale, give me a nod if that's correct. That's correct. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there you go. Sorry, I got to keep moving my mouse if I do that. So <laughs> you're good. You're good. All right. So now we're going to move into some of the specialty finishes. So uh, I have a particular fondness of this finish, uh, the, the wood grain. Now, this can be installed over stucco, but as you can see, it's continuous insulation finish system wood grain. Uh, in order to get the grooved look, the plank look, um, you really need insulation in order to do that so you can cut the grooves. Um, if you have a carverable mortar, I, you could uh, do it over stucco, um, but it, it can be done over stucco with a tape joint or some other practice. Uh, but these are all acrylic products. These are all master wall finishes that create a wood look. And I'm not going to go through the process of that now. If you'd like training on that, you can let us know. Uh, but wood grain is an option to replace the Nietzsche Ha type panels or whatever other brand you're looking at, Trespa. Uh, there's other brands out there. But it is to replicate that look and offer cost savings, value engineering, and a single system uh, with multiple finish looks. So if you had a standard finish, a brick look, a metal finish look, you're getting one system with all these different finished looks. I agree. Yeah. Also, it puts more money in our applicators' pockets. Yeah, they get uh, more work to do. Yeah, absolutely. And and a good margin, typically. Uh, if it's quoted right and priced right on the labor material side, uh, there's a good margin opportunity, uh, obviously greater than just the standard finishes. And we can help you with that as well. But good point, Reggie. Mm -hmm. Could that wood grain be done um, horizontally as well as the vertical that you're showing? Yes, any direction, any size panel. Um, I will say from experience, the six to eight inch plank look is the easiest install uh, for finish to make it look like a wood panel. Um, if you get in the larger format panels, it's a different application technique. Uh, which requires um, some special training above and beyond the, tr the typical wood grain finish training. Just a heads up. And someone else may have a comment on that as well. Yeah, all I right. think the, the one thing I'll say too is just as we're going through all these finishes, uh, you know, as we start thinking about exterior cladding and everything, I mean, the biggest thing that we're really pushing and promoting is, right, is one envelope, making sure that we can do all the stuff that they want wood in one section, they want stucco in another section. We're able to kind of be real versatile 
which is one of those things I think more applicators need to realize is that they probably are the most versatile type of applicator that's out there um, in the exterior envelope world. Because even something like, again, we're not trying to sit here in these type of Monday mornings with Masterwall to bash other people, but an attached system of some kind of rain screen is only that. It's an attached system to that rain screen, but the rain screen and everything behind it is usually a different roll-on product. Um, I'm going to use Alan in, in that one sense because Alan and I out in New York are looking at a job where Roller Shield for Masterwall is going to be used on the entire project, but his portion of the project is not the entire wall surface. It's only a portion of that with stucco and eaves that are on there. So um, it's one of those things where, you know, the versatility that these applicators have, I think is huge. All right. Another option with the wood grain is on a uh, ceiling or soffit application. Uh, this is very popular with hospitality brands where they have a pull through or a porta uh area and also on retail. So uh, Left Picture is a retail center. They decided to use our, our wood grain application. So it's a, a PPE install on a ceiling. The grooves are cut to replicate the length and the size of the panels. Um, the center is a soffit. Uh, of a porta cachere and the right is also a porta cachere so dale to your question what direction can these be done as you can see the one on the right you've got multi-directional grooves cut uh, so that that's an answer that was a good question dale and that should give you an answer there and these uh, on the right these are all foam bands uh, just to to replicate a stop point uh, so those are that's all just aesthetic All right, next we have the brick. So this says CIFS brick as well. So the CIFS, again, continuous installation finish system. That's a Masterwall trademark, by the way, so don't use it unless you're referencing Masterwall products, right? Um, but this can be installed over stucco as well. So insulation is not needed for this. Uh, it can be done over any flat wall surface. Um, your stucco just does need to be a nice, clean, flat wall because we're not adding a... Uh, half inch thin brick over this. Okay, this is a this is a finish system done with a stencil, just like your your old school Eves brick, template brick. Uh, the difference with this is we have a, a mortar product that goes in and backfills in those mortar joints after the installation to make it look like a true finished brick. Okay, so it's a little different than the old stencil with the Versatex as the mortar and a textured finish over the surface. This actually is a finished brick application, all with synthetic Eves products. Any questions there? How do you do that over stucco, Grant? How's that done over stucco? So, um, only issue with the stucco is that you're gonna have to have those control joints. Uh, so those would have to be planned very well in the design. But just like if you were applying a medium sand finish over stucco dale, um, you can install this at the same way. So you're going to stick that stencil to your stucco surface, apply your finish over that, remove that stencil and come back fill with the mortar product. Gotcha. So again, the only issue is the layout. So obviously you're going to have more control joints in a wall with that stucco assembly. Understand. Okay. Um, any questions on that from any or any comments from any of the master wall folks there? Again, considerable cost savings versus traditional brick. Um, structurally uh, removes the needs for your lentils and your window headers and all those. How large is the uh, format panel? On which product? I'm sorry. On the brick. So there's there's it's multiple physical. yeah there's multiple sizes um, and there can be custom sizes available, but those can be anywhere from the traditional size, um, traditional brick to the larger, longer format brick. Uh, there's a lot of options. Um, they also have the headers. Um, there's there's a lot of options 
um, for that product. So it's not, it's not, you know, held to just one style of brick. There's, there's multiple options. And we can have someone send you a, a data sheet with those options if you'd like. Yeah, you know, one of the things as we're going through this, if you guys have your chat windows open, <clears throat> which on the bar at the bottom, you know, you'll see where it just either says chat. Um, if you're clicking on there, as as we've been going through this, Stuart has been uploading certain pieces. You can actually download these things right from that chat window um, that Stuart has. So even if you wanted something else on just a regular finishes, he can put that out there as Grant is going through these textures. All right. Yeah, there's data sheets up there. Uh, that's nice. All right, so the next look is uh, our Lumia finish, which is a granite type finish with mica flakes in it. So there are black flakes and there are also the clear flakes. These can be customized. We also have standard colors. Uh, and as you can see on the picture here, uh, these are V grooves cut into insulation to simulate a granite block panel. Uh, installation. Again, lightweight, base coat mesh finish. Uh, we do recommend you use a primer when installing this product. Uh, we have primer formulas to go with each color, our standard colors, and we can obviously create custom primer colors to go with these products. So it is installed with a trowel and um, it's a nice finish. Grant, you mentioned the primer. I, I can't remember as I look through this, the slides that you said um, if you touch on primer specific at all later on I don't think you did did you no I, I do not so I'll mention it here I, you know just one of those things where primers yeah okay it's an extra process right it's kind of annoying sometimes but the amount of, of savings ultimately especially on dark colors I mean I can't tell you the amount of times where primer is not used probably should have been used and for whatever reason, whether, whether it's efflorescence, whether it's just a dark color and some base coats showing through because it was a little thin when it was applied, um, as far as the finish over top of the non-primered surface, um, working time, especially you know on those hot days. Um, look, it's a low cost really in a longer investment of using a primer almost in anything, especially as on these specialty finishes. Um, but I think that's one thing that you know, any of us, whether it's applicator, distributor, architect, if we can put into there um, the use of a primer more, I think you're going to see a lot better jobs and consistency in things. Yeah. And, and on the material side, you're talking pennies per yeah. square foot. Yeah. Um, and on the labor side, you're not looking for a perfectly painted wall. You're just looking for a consistent surface of, of a single color. And, and ultimately it, it uh, offers greater coverage of your finishes because yeah. the absorption rate is decreased um, with that surface. So we obviously always recommend a primer, uh, again, especially with these specialty finishes and any dark colors, yeah. um, especially if you get into the fine sand texture, please use a primer if you're yeah. going with dark colors, please, yeah. please. Yeah. If, I, if I can add to that, Grant, uh, if you don't use a primer and you've submitted one of our samples, you're not going to get the same color. So we're making our samples over the primer that's correlated for that particular color. And if you don't order the primer along with the Lumia, you're gonna get a different color on the wall. It might not be dramatic, but it won't match the sample. Yep. Exactly. All right, uh, another option in the stone finishes. So we have two types of stone finish. So we have an agar stone, which is a heavier stone. And then we have superior stone, which is a finer grade of, of stone. So this is a, a acrylic product. So there's a natural aggregate with a acrylic polymer, a clear binder. And um, as you can see this project in the picture, really cool. So they recreated the cement um, stone panel uh, which typically have an exposed fastener kind of look, which a lot of architects like the look of the panel, but they don't like the exposed fastener. So this offers that look without the exposed fastener. So a nice option. Um, again, a money-making opportunity when you're talking, um, you know, I don't know what these panels cost installed. If it was the true cement panel, I'm guessing in the $30 square foot range. 
and that may not include your continuous insulation or your air and water resistive barrier. So with this, you're, you're offering a value engineered option with a full system that includes air water resistive barrier, drainage, continuous insulation, reinforcement, and a finish. Uh, so just always remember that, but a nice option here. The metallic look. Now, if you design, specify, or bid this, please. This is under great. I love this. This is great. Go ahead. <laughs> please understand that there is a high level of training and expertise required with a smooth panel look. That's it. Okay. The weather has to be perfect. You have to tint the entire job as in tent cover, not tent as in color, tent as in cover when you're applying these products. Um, weather has to be perfect. We've got this all in our data sheet. Yeah. But if I were an installer, and I don't know if I should say this or not, I would not do a smooth panel project for less than around $40 a square foot. That'd be my minimum. Yeah. Knowing the areas I have to retouch, um, you know, do repairs. Just know that uh, if you're going to go with the smooth look, we have that whole process. It is doable. And um, just those are my yeah. disclaimers. <laughs> Okay. Uh, but we also, to avoid some of those issues, we offer textured finishes in the metallic. So we have a fine sand option and a limestone texture option in the metallics. And so is, I was just going to say, Grant, this is one of those things where just to back, uh, what you're saying, I agree as far as the cost, you know, making sure we're doing this. And that's anything, right? Any, any one of our businesses, again, whether it's distributor, general contractor, architect, applicator, um, the price is the price. We need to be able to get what we get. And we need to all be willing to walk away if they're like trying to cut something out <clears throat> and, and say, no, we're not going to cut it out because we know what type of work this manship this needs, right? It needs a highly leveled and skilled person. Um, and if they really want this, then, then that's what they need to either pay for or be willing to accept on a, a timeline. It may be not even about money, but they might want something quick. It's not a quick thing, right? It's not like just put it up and be done. You need to take your time with this kind of stuff. And, um, and we know how the bidding process works, which hopefully we'll get into in a few weeks. Yep. Okay. Um, so on the, on the textured finishes, we recommend the ag, agri lime for small areas, bands, accent areas. Um, if you're doing a larger area, which you're going to hopefully panel off in three by three to five by five type panels, uh, that is where we would recommend the fine sand metallic if you're going with that option. Just throwing that out there as well. Okay. Uh, this is the limestone, ours is called AgriLime. So this is a two coat process. So you're gonna do a tight first coat and then you're gonna come back and do a, a second coat once that's fully cured and dried and you're gonna float that surface and it creates a nice smooth limestone type surface. Uh, you could replicate cast stone, um, even you could slick it to get a nice Venetian plaster look as well. All right, uh, various. So this is a true smooth plaster. Um, it replicates an old traditional bag limestone plaster surface. So this is a nice white. Reggie Mendoza, congratulations. This is a nice project. This is Coronado Springs down in uh, Orlando at Disney World. So this is the interior, but this is an interior or exterior product. Uh, okay, what about again, prices on these two? Do you have an idea or, I mean, this is gonna depend, I see. And you're asking about the pricing per square foot, I'm assuming on both the AgriLime and, and the various, but again, a lot of things in all of this, right? It's gonna depend on region, territory, and things like that, but the average, I don't know, what do you think? Uh, depending on the conditions, I'd say it's gonna be 30 to 40% yeah. more than your traditional standard finishes. Yeah. This was a two coat process, they came, you know, did the first coat, let that take up, came and did the second coat and floated it with the plastic float. Mm. Yeah, and they got some nice natural modeling in it. It's a really nice looking product. So again- Do you recommend when you do this various, uh, do you recommend 
going back with the basic mesh or embedding mesh into your uh, one coat or the brown coat of a three coat, do you recommend doing that uh, yes. just so that you don't have the imperfections? Yes, Dale. I, I would. It's worth the money to do mm -hmm. a, a a base coat and mesh skim to get a nice wall level surface so that you don't see those bumps and uh, bruises and the surface of the moon through that finish. Sorry, that was a joke for the stucco people. Right. You've seen those stucco jobs that look like yeah. the surface of the moon. <laughs> when, the, yeah. when the critical light hits it, I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, good, good recommendation, Dale. It's Monday. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, sorry about that. Let me go back one. All right. This is the last slide uh, for these finishes. So travertine. So this has a uh, an aggregate in it that when it's trialed on, it creates a natural modeling effect. Uh, so you can kind of see it in these that first picture, especially. So that is not a stain. That modeled look actually comes from the aggregate that's in the finish. Okay, so it's a very smooth sand, very similar to that various finish. Uh, it just has the, uh, and I'm not technical enough to know the name, someone may know the name of that aggregate, uh, but it creates a nice natural model look. Um, and that job on the bottom, that's all eaves, that top area, uh, created, made it look like a cast stone with, again, a little natural modeling there. So that's an interior or exterior product as well. And I think with that, uh, I've made it through. Now I'll just note that we also offer a full line of coatings with similar um, chemistry as these products. So uh, maybe we can hit on that another time, but if anybody has any questions about coatings, um, we can hit that. I will say for the metallic panel look, we make a Duracoat satin coating so it's a satin finish and Reggie uh, recently completed a project with that um, but it's a much easier product to spray um, it doesn't have the metallic flakes in it which can block up your gun and cause um, cause you to have to clean the gun constantly so you can get a nice flow so if anybody's interested in looking at that if you've got a smooth panel project uh, you're looking at bidding we can offer that as well so again that product is called Duracoat satin uh, it's a nice option and we can give you a high gloss sealer to go with that to create a panel finished panel look. Hey Grant, I just sent pictures to Stuart. Stuart, I don't know if you've received them yet. Uh, if you can throw them up there for us to look at. Yep. Brian. Can yeah, I can do it. Give me control back though, Grant. The one thing, um, the one thing I will say too, is just to mention, I was going to look it up real quick. Also Dale, your question about doing base and mesh on there. Um, you can do a Boltec mesh is what we have right now, um, which is a thinner option when it comes to, it should be coming up here. Yeah, Boltec mesh. Um, I think everybody should be able to see that, correct? Okay, good. Um, that's going to be just your option. You know, when it comes to over scratch and brown, Dale, something like that, when it comes to wire scratch and brown, a um, little bit of a different weave <clears throat> um, so that people are able to use it. Same again, 38 by... 150 so you're still getting it but instead of their normal you know 4.5 ounce mesh here it's a 2.0 um so again your your base coat is going to really be slick on there but again you're getting that a little bit better impact resistance and then also having a nice smooth acrylic base for that leveling of the uh whether it's verse various or plaster flex or whatever it might be so discussing finish coats over say like a regular stucco system uh, because obviously you have hitchhikers in there um, and using the mesh, say you come back and you use a base and mesh or you just embed the mesh. What's the difference in square footage that you're getting out of your finish? So say if you take like a uh, smooth or a fine finish compared to a swirl finish, how many square feet if it's just a traditional stucco compared to it's a stucco that has embedded mesh or the base and mesh? Is there a difference in your, in your coverage rate? Um, for your finish between the two, I, I'll speak to that, uh, Dale. I don't. I don't know that it's going to be. It's going to be nominal. I mean, it's going to be minimal on that. Really, you know, priming that surface is going to give you coverage, uh, a, a better square footage out of your finish. Um, 
I don't know that the base code and mesh application is necessarily going to give you more coverage because you're not supposed to be building those finishes <laughs> to level that surface. Um, if, if you overbuild, you're going to have some surface cracking, some shrinkage cracking. So uh, it's just going to give you uh, aesthetically a better wall, uh, long-term performance. Uh, I don't know that your coverage will necessarily be better. Okay, thanks. I think priming, priming will help you get about five to maybe 7% better coverage if you're priming over that surface, but just the base code application, probably not anything significant. It's just hiding the flaws in that stucco surface, Dale. Yeah. That, that's also right. what it's doing. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So uh, on this picture here, we'll go back to that picture, Brian, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah absolutely. This is what it's here for. It'll come. The other one. Yeah, there you go. So this white area on this photo, um, it's kind of a built out panel. That is that Duracoat satin that they <laughs> cut V grooves. <laughs> they cut V grooves to uh, create that look of the panel. There you go. Um, uh, so. Grant, a number of the um, images that you're showing here, especially this one we have in front of us, all those projections, is there a drip cap on them? Uh, right here at the top? Yeah, on any of those. Uh, so you have the window pop out, you have the accented uh, plank feature coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, Reggie would know better, but I believe uh, there is a, a roof coating or some kind of roof cap that's installed over those, um, or it's a slope surface depending on okay. some of the conditions. Uh, and the, um, one of the other previous slides which is the drugstore um, building, which is needless to say very handsome. A lot of the base details went right to grade. Um, I'm going to, I think that, so on that drug store, uh, I know he had a stay, he had a, um, a stone base. Yeah. Right here. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, this is all true masonry here. Um, so this is, this is traditional brick. Uh, the wood but here. The wood. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. That's hard to tell. Um, now this other one here. That's backfield. Brad, that was your project. You may know a little bit about that one on the right. Um, you're, hold on. And Martin, you're right. I mean, that's, that's one of those things we talked a little bit last week on one of the details um, when it comes to, you know, keeping it six inches above grade, two inches above a solid surface, like if this was a walkway. And how the reality is, this is one of those things, especially when we do these presentations and such, a lot of the architects, you'll do it exactly the way we're specifying it as a manufacturer. What happens is in the field, it just doesn't end up happening that way. Whether most of the time in this case, as far as to grade, they just backfill to butt up against whatever the finish was and put as much mulch as they want to, to make it look that way. Um, that, but that yeah, was it actually, should be cut down. Yeah, that was a retrofit of a Hampton Inn and Peachtree Corners. So they didn't have a lot of options. We brought it to the general contractor's attention. Uh, because he was asking, you know, to terminate basically below grade um, as the other system was, but, but uh, we sort of got to meet in the middle. So we're not held up four to six inches like you typically would in new construction. Um, but they've got, as um, Brian was mentioning, uh, a fill there that's rock, probably about two inches. Not for each allocation and everything. Brad, thank you. But let me ask, let me be the Philadelphia lawyer here. Doesn't that mitigate the warranties on the systems that you would provide? <laughs> That's a great question, Martin. It really right. is. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is. I mean, I, it's one of those things. I think it would go back and forth to the point of, you know, who's going to take responsibility for it. I don't know if Dennis, um, you know, <laughs> if you want to chime in on this or, or Grant or anybody else. I'll, I'll let Dennis speak to that. He, he's, he's somewhere here. I got him, Brian. Right, go. go ahead, Dennis. Go. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I guess uh, technically it's a code violation. So um, what we do as manufacturers is send it back to the local building official. Um, even though six inches is uh, the magic number throughout the country, um, you'll see a lot of times in, in say, a southern climate where you don't have a lot of backfill or anything like that, 
they seem to allow it locally. Um, also, if it's paved or not paved, that makes a difference to us as far as um, the distance between the, uh, the east and say a pavement or something along those lines. Thanks, Dennis. And Martin, here's one too. I'll just show you as far as, you know, just because I have it as far as an image, you know, this is one that we were doing wood grain on. And again, you can see like, okay, there's their grade. This was a retrofit. It was not new construction. So they're only dealing with whatever was there. It wasn't that they were putting something new on yeah, and you know, they really need to go lower. And, uh, and when I'm on the job site, yeah, I'm going to mention it and talk to them about it. I think we all need to make sure that we're talking about that. Like Dennis said to code, what is code? And many times I've even said, you know, look, I, as a manufacturer's rep, I have to talk to code. I'm not telling you what you've done for 30 years, right? Steven and I, I, from Masterwell will always talk about it. everybody says I've been doing it for 30 years um, everybody's been doing it for 30 years so we we got to make sure that we're talking about code what is code you want to change what code says that's on you but our spec and my recommendations are always going to be based on what is code thank you I think that's the answer to the question is the code and that last illustration certainly somebody could have, you could have come out and painted the base of that concrete to match the walls correct yes yep anything else discussions questions what do you got this is what we're here for I can comment on the uh, I'm sorry for that project where yeah. we had uh, the low slope areas on the pop-outs Oh, yes. You know, okay. I'm well aware of this. We told them it needed a cap. They didn't want to do a cap, so we had them put a couple of layers of uh, is part of this. waterproof base coat and mesh, and then the finish and paint over top of that with no warranty. That's how we got by that or around it. On these parts here? Yes, sir. Okay. And Martin, I think it was huge that you even asked and noticed that. I mean, I think that's one of those things that, again, as we go through these, honestly, these weeks of discussion and type of thing like this, I mean, these are the pieces where not many people discuss. It comes up right away and somebody's got to do something and I'll oh, just put it up there and be done. But, you know, really going through, like Reggie said, you know, talking through what does that need to happen um, and then who's going to be responsible for it in the end is, is important. Awesome. Anything else, everybody? I, this has been great so far. Like I said, again, I mean, it, I, I know we're trying to keep it to a half hour, but I think I, one of the things I noticed down here as I wrote um, some notes and stuff today was just the aspect of, I'm going to take this off. I'm going to stop doing this and, and at least kind of this way um, and put us all up was the fact that, you know, maybe it is going to be an hour, but a half hour education, we'll get into some questions, answers. We'll stay on. I usually try to stay on an extra 15 minutes after each week, just in case people want to discuss specific details or things. I've found that this way of communication has really been helpful. Um, and bring up again, slides and examples like that as, as needed. Um, so I think that's kind of what we'll be moving forward. But are there any other questions or comments from anybody here on the call? Awesome. Well, hey, listen, I appreciate it. Yeah, go ahead. Who was it? No, I was just going to say, Brian put that slide up, but if you have any questions, obviously all this regional manager's contact information is on our website. Stuart, if you want to plug that link in the chat real quick so they can have it, but uh, feel free to meet, reach out to uh, Brian or myself, Dennis, or any of our team here if you have any questions about any of this. Uh, even if it's somebody that's not in your, your territory, uh, we're all here to help. So uh, feel free to reach out. And uh, Stuart just pasted that link there in the chat. So if you want to click on that and pull our contact information, that's all there. You can see our ugly mugs in the pictures. And uh, yeah, and Dennis all. mentioned, Dennis just mentioned too, you know, the plan review piece that we have is huge. Dennis goes through these things. Um, look, I, I've started to kind of, I think all of us as reps, we've done it to where we go through the specification, highlight things, because we know, um, you know, and I know Martin, I know you, you just being you and the connection I have up here in the New York area, as far as an architect, we know that you don't have a lot of time on things. Um, so sometimes it's helpful just to say, hey, can you just check out my spec real quick? 
um, just look at it, make sure I'm not missing anything or if I should add something in again, like that primer instance, you know, or something like that. Um, send it to us, send it to Dennis or any one of the reps that are out there. We'll all be willing to look at it for sure. I think it's the biggest thing to make sure that we are covering the walls the right way. Um, like I said, it, going forward uh, right now, looking forward to next week um, is plastic components. Um, Herman's going to come on and talk about some of those key things that plastic components is more than just accessories, that there are critical reasons of why you would use what they have to offer. Um, going forward from there, we're looking again at Dow, uh, Construct Connect, or, or the Bid Coach with Mark Fly, uh, Georgia Pacific, ABBA, York Flashing, really dealing with the exterior envelope that we all deal with every day. Um, being able to kind of bring information uh, to you guys and discuss it in a live format. This will be recorded and so we will post it out there somewhere, whether it's Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn, just so that people can review it again if you want to go through certain pieces or forget a finish for today's thing and um, have everybody's information. But I appreciate everybody's time. I'll end it there. Thank you very much. And uh, like I said, I'll stay on for an extra 15 minutes or so till about 1130, just in case anybody wants to stay on, talk. Um, or has anything to go over. But as officially right now, have a great and wonderful Monday.